And now we need to create the little graphic, the little circle of the number inside it to put on our snooker ball. So now that's quite easy. If we go to the circle tool or the ellipse tool again, hold shift because we want another perfect circle. Now if you go to this default fill and stroke button here or click D, it will make it a white fill with a black stroke which is what we want. If we go to window, open up your stroke palette there, increase the stroke to about 5 points I'm going to put it inside. And now go to your text tool or T on your keyboard and I'm going to keep it a kind of a sans serif font so you can see it properly. Myriad Pro. I'm going to put in what number shall I do? I'll do five. Obviously, if you know about snooker and like which balls uh, accommodate to which colours, then you want to put the right colour. I'm just doing this for obviously an example purposes. Put five in there. Now, a good thing to do um, is because if you exchange this illustrated file to a computer that doesn't have the font that you're using. For example, I've added a font called Lightning Vault there. For example, if you were to put this on a different computer that didn't have this Lightning Vault um, font stored into it, then you won't be able to access it, it'll just go straight to Myriad Pro. But if we go to Type, Create Outlines, it'll create little anchor points that you can manipulate and that's no longer editable text it's just a shape so if you go to a different computer um, it's you'll still be able to see it it won't default to Myriad Pro obviously it doesn't matter on mine because I've gone to Myriad Pro anyway now if we go to window align again and just align horizontal and vertical center we can now group this Control G or Command G on the Mac or Object Group. Now, for for uh, the ability to stick this or map this to the snooker ball, what we'll need to do is create it into uh, convert it into a symbol. So that's easier. That's incredibly easy to do. So if you get a window symbols or Shift Control F1, no sorry F11 or shift command F11 if you're on a Mac just drag this graphic into here I'm going to name this ball underscore graphic and change the type to a graphic and flash registration doesn't really matter click OK and you see it is now turned into a symbol we can delete this because we don't need it on our artboard now if I want to edit the effect that I've put on here to add this ball graphic. I'm gonna uh, if I go to Effect 3D Revolve, it will apply that effect again. But if you actually want to edit the effect that's already applied on here, go to your appearance, double click this FX and that'll um, edit the effect. So I have 3D Revolve. If we double click FX, see the previous checked off, but just check that back on again. And now we can edit um, where we want it positioned and whatnot. <coughs> Click this button right here that says Map Art, and you see we get this little wireframe. Now what I'm going to do is actually put this to this rotation here, and you see we get this wireframe. It says Surface here, and it's there's only one surface on this sphere, which is the outside. So, you if you had a cube, for example, it would to show the different faces and you can toggle through each one which symbol you want to put on what uh, face. So you see symbol it's actually uh, selected from none at the moment but if we go to this arrow right here drop down menu and select our ball graphics and the white space here will be the space that's visible at the moment and the black space is the bit that you can't see and obviously as you rotate that that will change so I'm just going to scale this up, put this here, maybe scale it a bit, make it a bit smaller. And there we go, we have this nice, I'm going to actually make this a bit smaller still. We have this nice ball graphic with the snooker 
the 3D effect on it to make it look like a snooker ball. Now, the thing is, this um, this graphic here that we've put onto the um, that we've put onto the um, sphere. It still looks a bit 2D because it's not got any lighting effects on it. But if we go to shade artwork, and it says slower because if you have a slow machine, then it might you might not want to do it because it might crash. Or for for example, because it takes a lot of your RAM that's going on there. But you see here, look, it, the light is conforming to this graphic as well as just the sphere, so it looks a bit more 3D. Check OK, and we can we can move this about. We can then, what we can do is, if we hold Alt or Option on the Mac and drag a duplicate copy of this, change the fill to say a green colour, swatches, change it to a green, then let's bring out this symbol, go to break link and that will make it into a normal shape instead of just a symbol. Go to text tool again and we can put for example, the number seven. That might be green. I'm not too sure. I'm not a. <coughs> I'm not a snooker fan, as it were. But see, we've got this seven now. If we just align this, we can group that. Turn it into a symbol again. Graphic. We'll change this to ball underscore graphic two. Click OK. And go into your appearance palette again so we can edit the effect instead of applying another one. Go to Window Appearance or Shift F6. Double click the FX icon. Check the preview on. Go to Map Art. Now change this from being the 5 graphic to the 7 graphic. And you can place that wherever you want, just like normal. It's also got the shade artwork selection still active so it looks more 3D and there you go, you can make an entire set of these snooker balls and you can you've learned a bit about symbols and how to make a sphere and I hope you've enjoyed this uh, tutorial I'll be doing a lot more illustrated tutorials uh, throughout the Christmas period and as normal um, but till then, I'll see you guys later.